right, y'all, let's get to it. Today, we're going to talk about the top seven reasons that your receptacle is not working. Now, we're going to work through these. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos. Just use them for educational purposes only. And one of these seven reasons is going to be 99% of the time with different variations, don't get me wrong, that your receptacle is not working. Now, I didn't put them in any specific order, although I did save the most complex for the end. Okay, so you have to stick around for the end. But there's going to be one of these seven reasons that your receptacle is not working and you could potentially backwards troubleshoot from there. I'm the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so reason number one is your breaker is tripped. If you look here on the left-hand side, that's a normal engaged breaker. If you look over here, this is a breaker in the tripped position. Now, each brand is a little bit different on what their trip breaker looks like. Some of them have an indicator light. Now, we have to be careful here because if that breaker is tripped, there's probably a reason. I always let my customers know, and remember, never repeat anything in these videos, but what I'll tell them is if a breaker trips, you can feel comfortable to reset it one time if you feel comfortable, um, but if it trips again, then you need to call me immediately. So here's the score. If the breaker's in the trip position, every brand's a little bit different. A lot of times though, you'll push the breaker past off to reset it. You'll push it off and then passed off. It's a, like you're imagining you're pushing a little bit past off and then you're going to flick it back to on. If it trips again immediately, you definitely need to contact a qualified electrician. Let's get to it. All right, so the second reason that your receptacle may not be working is that your receptacle is bad. If you look at this one here, this is the worst condition. I've seen them like this where they're burnt out completely. Often you find them where they've just been burnt in the back and this is coming next, but typically it stops working before then. Now, what can happen is it can get hot. It can be a loose connection. It can be all of these different things, but typically what's happened is, is that where it's been a loose connection for a long period of time, or there's been a large wattage appliance in there, it's just broken the receptacle either the terminals have melted together and it'll trip the breaker or it's just ruined the device where it's not making good contact and you don't have power coming out of your receptacle you have to be super careful with all of these different scenarios because there could be power at your box just because there's not power coming out of the outlet doesn't mean that there's not power in the back of the box all right, so another reason is that the receptacle downstream is bad. Now, you could be working from this receptacle and going downstream, and the one in front of it is actually bad, and this is where the problem is showing up. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll work through a house, and I'll plug in, and I'll look to the left and to the right, and I'll go around and I'll search at those receptacles. Sometimes tapping on them can cause the broken receptacle to work. Now, that is not the fix. That's just telling me where the problem is. Then I have to pull that that receptacle out and I have to you know go through all the troubleshooting of getting it corrected and typically it will fix the problem downstream now one thing that we have to watch out for in any of the scenarios is it could be a loose connection downstream the outlet doesn't have to be bad it could just be a loose connection either the loose connection of the receptacle that's feeding this or a loose connection back here that is causing it not to go downstream Another very popular scenario is that your GFCI is tripped. Now you may have seen these in your bathroom and kitchen, right? Those are just the reset button. And the same thing with the breakers, I tell my customers, feel free to reset it once, but if it trips again, then we need to find out why. So you can reset this. Sometimes they are the breaker version of the GFCI back at your panel, but you could potentially reset it and it restore power here or restore power downstream. Now this is another one that happens all the time. I'll get customers that call and tell me that there's no power to this receptacle right here. And after a while of searching, I find out that there's actually a GFCI trip. Sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's in a bathroom, sometimes it's in a kitchen and it's running a receptacle across the other side of the house. So this is another really common one. Just because this receptacle doesn't have power here, doesn't mean that it's not being controlled by a GFCI downstream. This is a super common one, a loose junction. Now, whether this is a wire nutted connection, whether they've used these Wego blocks or whether it's the old school crimped connection, loose connections can be one of the greatest causes. Now this can be found inside of other outlet boxes. It can be found inside of lighting boxes. It can be found inside of random junction boxes in the attic, or it can be unfortunately a receptacle box that's been hidden inside the wall. We find loose connections and loose junctions all the time. And it's one of the greatest causes for there being no power at all. Now they sell specific testers that will help you tone out and maybe find problems like this. I have a story of a colleague of mine recently that took one of these devices. They couldn't get it to work, couldn't find where it was at, pulled everything apart. He actually traced the wire 
now they have a toning machine that will send off a signal and it beeps and he followed the wire through the wall around a door jam and found that there was a receptacle outlet box hidden in the wall but before he started cutting he went down in the basement and drilled a hole up into the stud and stuck his camera in the wall and sure enough there was an electrical junction box stuck inside the wall the connection had become loose over time and it was causing the receptacles not to work all right, this is another one that you may not think of, but it happens all the time. Check and find out if that is a switch controlled receptacle. I've had people who have lived in houses for years and didn't know that a certain receptacle was actually switch controlled because the switch just happened to always be on. But in my early days, I've went and trouble shot for hours, come to find out that it's a switch controlled receptacle. So one of the first things that I do now is I check and I say, hey, is this a switch controlled receptacle? It was very popular in the past, but it's still code today in certain areas is where you can use a switch controlled receptacle instead of having an overhead light. Now, I don't recommend it because I'm all about as much light as you can get, especially if you're building a brand new house, but it's still code legal in certain rooms that I can have a switch controlled receptacle and not put an overhead light. So before you do anything else, stop and find out if it's a switch controlled receptacle. And finally, and this is the one most technically involved, is your breaker may be bad. Now, just because the breaker's in the on position doesn't mean the power's coming out. Just because the light's on doesn't mean anybody's home. So here's the score. This one takes a little more skill. Remember, never work on an energized circuit and never work in an energized panel. But what you'll have to do is there are ways that you can verify whether or not the breaker is working. The first thing people do all the time is they will go and they'll replace the breaker. They'll call me and be like, I replaced the breaker on my own, but it's still not working. That's the very last thing that we're going to do. Now, I'm not saying that you can't verify power early on in the game, but before I ever take that panel cover off, I'm going to go through all of these other six steps that we've looked at. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take the panel cover off and check and verify that the breaker is working. Some guys might want to start there, but I'm always, if I'm on a, tr a troubleshooting call, the last thing I do is take the panel cover off unless I really feel like I can get something done in there. I'm going to go through these other simpler things first so I don't have to take the panel cover off. I hope this added a little bit of value to you today. Please hit that thumbs up button and that subscribe button. Let's get to it.